Hi, Roger here with Asif Hassan, who's the co-founder of Quantify Welcome. Thank you, Roger. So, economic viability of AI, a big topic. When do you think this is going to happen in terms of like health and just the benefit of humanity? Yeah, uh, a great question, Roger. And uh, so I think you know there are uh, two kind of broad uh, areas uh, of progress uh, that we need to make, right? So the first is the the technology itself, right? Uh, and we are seeing uh, just an enormous uh, pace of innovation from a technology standpoint uh, within healthcare. So there's a whole variety of tasks uh, from a clinical standpoint and an administrative standpoint, which AI is able to do very well. Like for example, uh, there's uh, you know radiology related uh, scenarios where AI is able to read radiological scans uh, at near human, sometimes above human levels of accuracy. Uh, there are things uh, like detecting diabetic retinopathy, uh, things like detecting early uh, onset of Alzheimer's using speech patterns, uh, and even discovering new drug molecules. And all of these uh, areas are where AI has proven to be quite effective. So the technology itself is moving along in a way that it can have wide, widespread impact. Uh, the headwinds that we are seeing is uh, in the actual adoption of these uh, technologies in the clinical and administrative workflows. Uh, and there are two broad challenges there. Uh, it's organizational and it's regulatory. So from an organizational standpoint, uh, the key issue is uh, building trust in AI systems. Uh, so there's you know, some concerns around job security, there's concerns around uh, bias, explainability of models, uh, and all these things are creating some level of nervousness in terms of what is AI going to be able to accomplish uh, in this domain. And so there are some question marks there. Uh, the, from a regulatory standpoint, you have uh, challenges around uh, data privacy, uh, HIPAA compliance, uh, and, and these issues, as well as uh, the timeline and the cost of getting an AI solution through the FDA approval channels uh, is also uh, pretty long and expensive. Uh, and so these are and these are all justifiable areas where you would want a certain level of oversight, uh, but that is slowing down the adoption of uh, tech, this technology uh, to the broad ecosystem and the masses, right? Uh, what we are seeing though is there is a small group of clinicians and administrators who are as excited, if not more excited, uh, as we are uh, on the, the transformative potential of AI. Uh, and this makes us very, very optimistic that in the not so distant future, we will see widespread adoption. Mm -hmm. So so what yeah. kind of problems in particular is Quantify working on in healthcare? Yeah, so uh, there's uh, the broad, you know, I mean a macro sense, what we have seen is that over the last several years, uh, we have gotten really, really good at capturing data uh, within clinical workflows through EHR systems and things like that. Uh, what we have not seen uh, is the ability to make meaningful use of this data, uh, apply AI techniques to improve clinical and administrative workflows. Uh, and there are two areas in particular where the challenge is particularly severe. Uh, so there's a large volume of imaging data that exists in healthcare. Uh, and then there is uh, a large volume of clinical notes, encounters, et cetera, which is free form text. Uh, that is buried inside EHR systems. Now because this data can't be neatly organized in rows and columns, uh, it's very hard for humans to analyze this, right? And this is where machine learning techniques come in. Uh, and so we are in particular focused around these two areas, right? The ability to apply uh, imaging data and the ability to apply machine learning techniques uh, to uh, clinical notes. Uh, to be able to uh, transform uh, clinical admi and administrative processes. So as an example, uh, we've worked with uh, a very prestigious system uh, in the Ma Maryland uh, area uh, to develop a model that takes in a CT image and it can estimate the volume of blood clots in a brain trauma situation at a level of accuracy that is at or above human level. Uh, we've also worked with another healthcare technology and uh, pharmaceutical company to detect uh, lung diseases that are very, very hard to detect, right? So those, you know, just the general area of applying uh, 
machine learning to images to improve uh, the speed and accuracy with which clinicians can make their inference is one that we are going after in a big way. Uh, the other area is, of course, uh, the unstructured clinical notes. Uh, and there we are working uh, to be able to uh, apply that to curate uh, data for the purposes of outcomes research. Right? So we, we are actually uh, giving a talk uh, tomorrow afternoon where we are going to demonstrate uh, that we work with uh, a large uh, healthcare system in the Pacific Northwest uh, and uh, to take their uh, clinical notes data and then abstract from there in an entirely automated way uh, the scenarios where cancer has recurred. And this typically takes uh, human abstractors and a manual process up to a year to do this task and push that data into uh, the uh, you know, cancer registries. And now this is happening in minutes. So these are kind of two areas that we are going after in a, you know, in a significant way. So how do you see the future happening? And like, what is your role in creating that future? Yeah, so uh, I think there's, uh, I mean, the, the, given the pace at which things are moving, right, uh, it sort of makes uh, the future, uh, you know, somewhat unpredictable uh, in sort of a micro sense, but in a macro sense, uh, there is uh, a research uh, that I had uh, read from a very well-renowned uh, research institution that pegged the economic impact of AI over the next decade at about $15 trillion globally, right? Uh, what was interesting there is uh, that a third of that, about $5 trillion, uh, is what came from substitution uh, uh, and automation. So what I mean by that is you know, machines doing tasks that today humans are doing, and this is the area that most people get quite concerned uh, and, and anxious about. Uh, but what was even more interesting is that uh, two-thirds of the impact, about 10 trillion, was coming from entirely new products and services that we today can't even comprehend, right? Uh, and, and so, uh, and this is the area that will create new and interesting jobs, will spawn entirely new business models and things like that. Uh, and so this is what makes us uh, very, very excited. So the role that we see uh, for uh, our organization is to uh, help organizations understand where AI will make a transformative impact on their business model, right? That's, that's number one. And number two, to actually then go ahead and help them build out these solutions. So we see ourselves as, uh, as advisors, as architects and engineers in helping uh, clients transform their business with AI. So how do you see TensorFlow fitting into this? Yeah, so uh, I mean, TensorFlow has uh, helped us address a class of problems uh, in a very practical and cost-effective way uh, that up until a few years ago, uh, we could not even dream of addressing, right? So this whole area of applying deep learning algorithms at scale to uh, data sets uh, that can't be neatly organized into rows and columns and doing interesting uh, machine learning and AI tasks with that uh, is an area where TensorFlow has been instrumental. So when we first uh, started using TensorFlow, this was late November, you know, this was late 2015 timeframe when TensorFlow was open sourced, we were a team of about 80 people. Uh, today we are a team of about 1,000 people, so we have grown 12-fold uh, uh, in the last three and a half, uh, four-ish years, uh, largely through uh, the application of deep learning techniques to interesting uh, problems uh, in computer vision, speech, natural language, et cetera, uh, helping uh, businesses build more intelligent products, helping them uh, make their customer experience frictionless, uh, helping them uh, make their processes automated and in some cases autonomous, as well as detecting anomalies and risks in their business uh, and make their businesses safer, right? So these are the types of tasks uh, that uh, TensorFlow has uh, allowed us to address. Uh, and, and these were, of course, you can make the case that pre-TensorFlow, you could have done the same things uh, through application of, of other you know, uh, uh, software, uh, but to do it, in a uh, cost-effective way and to do it in a way that is uh, technologically feasible at scale is something that we just could not have done, right? 
So in that sense, on that segment of our business, uh, TensorFlow has had like a zero to one impact almost. Great, yeah? well thanks for your time today. Thank you very much, appreciate the opportunity.